is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips, and today I am coming to you live from the Borghese um, Gallery here. This is the Palazzo Borghese, and we just finished a tour there. Um, it were, Well, nobody was guiding us around, but you have to go ahead and purchase tickets for the time that you want to enter. They are in two hour increments, and so um, while we were there, we saw that people were getting turned away because they're sold out, which I think is very common during especially the high season. And so if you are coming, make sure that you book your ticket in advance. And then the other thing I, we did notice is that they are letting a lot more people in now for every timed entry. Um, you'll notice if you've been here before that as you go down in the area that you enter in, that's all been redone since um, the last time we was here is in 2019. And so um, that's different, but it is much more crowded now because they do let a lot more people in. And so that's a change. We've been having a wonderful time. This morning we did do our tour from the Vatican. It was a little bit different than how they did the same tour last time, although it did have the same description. And so um, I can talk to you about that another day, but um, when we get on the ship, we'll have a lot more time and I'll go over those details with you, but that was a little bit different but we still had a wonderful time. The Vatican is really busy. It is not near as packed as it was before, but it is really busy. And um, if you want to go to St. Peter's Basilica, book a tour that has that as part of it, like the Vatican with the Sistine Chapel and um, St. Peter's, because going out that way that I told you, they are really careful now. Like they have their tour guides say who's in their group, so you're not gonna be sliding through there. And so um, I would suggest if you wanna go on St. Peter's to go ahead and book a tour because the line was really long. We've been there, I've been there several times, so we didn't go this time. Um, just telling you that, but other than that, we've been having a wonderful time. It's very warm, it's sunny, it's beautiful. Um, it's everything that we had hoped for. So if you've got particular questions about Rome, just put them in the comments or about anything in our trip this far and then I will kind of know a little bit better what everybody is wondering and I can get um, back to it and I can also talk about that some more. So um, thanks. Now the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about is just all of the news that I am getting regarding the Crown Princess and the Caribbean Princess and if any of you are on those ships I would love to hear from you as well as if you were on a different princess ship and I would also love to hear from you if you are on a different cruise line because I am really interested to find out if Princess is the only one having some of these problems or if others are and um, we're just not hearing about it. So first of all, we've got um, a Let's Go family member on the Caribbean Princess right now. And um, before we came here, I gave you an update about what he was saying. But um, the next update he told me that is that they finally got the internet going better. But you know what you guys, they are still struggling with the toilets on the Caribbean Princess. He um, sent me an update in here, let me see. I have to look at it on my phone because I'm not at home. So he said, um, and interestingly enough, he just watched the video that I put out about the loyalty um, that Princess does and kind of what they give you. And he said that it was rather ironic, the timing, because it just at dinner that evening that um, some people at their table were talking about different cruise lines and the royalty, loyalty prob, um, programs. And one lady um, who was at his table said she is elite with Princess. She did not receive the bag of toiletries that we've talked about that she had received in the past. And she also said that her cabin steward just told her that Princess had stopped doing that benefit. He did say that the toilet situation on the Caribbean is not good and it has gotten worse, that the toilets are not flushing. And so um, I hope that gets fixed soon or else they're going to have one of those cruises. Remember a few years ago um, when there was a cruise that Carnival did and had all of that trouble? Um, they're going to get some notoriety that I think they probably don't want on that. So I hope they're working on it. Um, like I said, he said that the internet and the Medallion Class app are working perfectly right now, so at least something's working for them. Um, I still love that in spite of everything going on, he said that they had an amazing day in Roatan, and also that the um, show last evening was also absolutely wonderful. And so I really appreciate those updates. Thank you so much. And then um, the Crown Princess. So we heard from somebody who was on it last week, and they were. Um, he was saying... Um, that um, pretty much people were not wearing their masks. Um, he wore his mask some, and um, that there were people in his group that did test positive for COVID once they got home. And then um, I appreciated that he let us know that um, when he was on the ship that um, they had wanted 
to um, sign up for a time in the main dining room so that she could, um, you know how on the app you can select and eat at the same time every evening? They had wanted to do that, but they wouldn't let them do it. And so um, the dining room was really nice, kept their table for them so they would have the same server every night. Um, he said that the, um, that the food was just okay. He said Sabatini's was even okay. He said the Crown Grill was amazing. He said that the buffet does need some help. He said that uh, there was a lot of the same options a lot of the time. A lot of it was not labeled to know what it was you were eating. And then it was just some simple things like hot dogs and no buns, eggs Benedict with no sauce. Is it really eggs Benedict then? I don't think it is, but anyway. Um, so I appreciated him saying that. But then also, um, he said that they went to the um, fitness center and that there was quite a bit of broken equipment. And so um, he pointed out, he said during the shutdown, could they not have fixed the equipment? Checked all that out. Um, I don't know why it's broken, but anyway, I really appreciated his update on that. Now we've got um, our Let's Go family member, Judy, who is on the crown this week. And um, as I have mentioned before, she sent an update letting us know that even before they cruised, they had been told that there would be additional changes to their itinerary. And then um, once they got on board the ship, um, they were supposed to be getting to Juno at four o'clock and um, they didn't end up getting there until 6.30, so everybody got their excursions canceled. But then luckily, they were able to condense their um, whale watching trip to just two hours, so that then people were able to at least get that in. She said her husband had never seen a whale, so that was fabulous. I also appreciate that she pointed out that um, she said that overall the menus are simpler than she had recalled before. Housekeeping is once a day, unless you um, ask for twice. And that is also the way it's been on the three cruises that we have been on since three starts. So that just certainly must be fleet wide. They said um, that there was only one show in the um, theater the other evening. She said the medallion app will not show details on the room TV. So they're only looking at it on the phone, but they are really still glad for that printed out copy of the princess patter because sometimes it's hard to view everything and doesn't work quite smoothly. I thought this was interesting. She said her husband went to an exercise class the other morning and it was full. And they told him that maybe he should bookmark it on his app the next time he wants to go, which I don't think that's good counsel because I remember the first time that we sailed, you know, we had bookmarked all these things to say, you know, you think you're saving a spot. And when we got on board, they're like, oh no, that's to just to show interest. You just go ahead and go to things. And they did point out that a lot of things are first come, first serve. So keep that in mind. If there is something that you really want to see, you're going to need to get there early is what I would say. So keep that in mind. Um, she also said that, um, let's see, there are about 1,300 people on the ship. And out of those 1,300 people, 900 of them are first time cruisers. And so I hope they have a wonderful time. Um, I think that in the long run, surely these experiences that people are having on the Crown are not um, what we're used to experiencing on Princess. So I hope people give us another chance and I hope that Princess um, is able to um, get things going better than they are right now. I honestly think that part of it is because of COVID. I think a large chunk of it is. And then I think part of it is just poor planning. And so, um, I do think that since people um, have been planning their Alaska cruises, I think it would have been appropriate for Princess to give people the chance to um, move to another cruise if they wanted to, because the changes that they are making are just so disruptive and really not giving people the cruise experience that they signed up for. I know that um, currently on the Crown, they also received a 20% cruise, um, like future cruise credit. Um, and in the end, that's really not very much money, especially if you've saved for a long time and you're on one of these Alaska cruises or it's supposed to be a special thing that you've really been waiting for. Um, you're not having the experience you thought. So tell me what you guys think about that in the comments. Um, the last thing, um, let's see. Um, let's see. Oh, and you know what? If you guys are wanting, if all of you are looking at booking that transfer, that runs from the Seattle airport up to Vancouver and then back to SeaTac again, hurry up and do it. We had a Let's Go family member say that they as well have been trying to book that and they're going to be sailing, um, they are going to be going in the middle of September and Princess says that there are no seats left on their transfers. 
I would hope that they would add another bus, but I don't know with the um, way things are looking, it doesn't seem like they're on top of that. And so um, hurry up and book your um, transfer as soon as you know you wanna do it if you think that that's what you're going to do. Then the last thing is I've had several people asking um, who are actually coming from other countries to go on an Alaska cruise and they are worried about the testing issue. A lot of them are coming from countries because um, I haven't looked, but most countries don't require, maybe nobody else but the U.S. requires a test to fly in. And so they are so worried. So just keep in mind that if you cross at a land border into the U.S., you don't have to test. And so if you're flying um, so that you're like going to come to the U.S. and then fly home, just either book a transfer or hire, a, like rent a car, drive across the border, or hire another car service to bring you. That's um, what I would suggest um, if you're thinking about that kind of thing, that really does work. And so just wanted to let you know about that. If any of you have any questions about any of this, surely do put it in the comments below. And like I said, I would really like to hear from anybody out there so we um, have a good picture of what's going on on the different cruise lines and on the different cruise ships. And so if you appreciate these updates, would you please give this video a thumbs up? And I will be talking to you all again really soon. And when we're done here, I'll have Gordon just pan the camera around here so you can kind of see the whole thing. So um, I will be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye. So these are the gardens. It's behind. So this is the Villa, Villa Borghese. This is the gardens behind. Through those pillars over there, it looks like they used um, that area of the park just as a soccer field. And then they've got all of these sculptures and there's clearly some people playing baseball and then towards this direction here is out in front of the villa and you have to enter an exit over on this side over here but when you go around the front is where they have some more benches where you can sit a beautiful park and um, where the little um, the little fountain is that you can refill your water bottle so we'll just show you that when we get back around there so thanks so here is the front of the Villa Borghese working on it so we just walk down here See the fountains here? That's how you do it if you forgot your bottle of water, your empty water bottle. <laughs>